What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals, restocks and drops at both DLT Trading and eKnives. I'm going to link these pages down in the description so that you guys can take a look at these pages yourselves. If you don't want to hear the sound of my voice, that's perfectly fine. They'll be down there for your convenience. But if you'd like to hear me talk about this stuff and uh, get my thoughts on it, then uh, stick around because that's what I'm going to do. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's start off here with some restocks for DLT trading. If you're watching this on the exact day that I uploaded it, I'm recording this on a Friday afternoon. So most of this stuff should still be here. The Spartan Harzy Blades, uh, I'm sorry, the Spartan Blades Harzy Tactical Trout. Hmm, it's actually a really good looking fixed blade. They also have the Aries, I would venture to guess. Oh, I would prefer the FDE Aries. That's pretty cool. Massive Cleric 2 with a green inlay. That's pretty cool. Probably the only single action OTF that's available on the market. That's, I mean, it's going to be, I I don't think they're quite as powerful as like the Halo 6s, but the Halo 6, I mean, if you've been trying to find a Halo 6, hey, I hear, I've been trying to find one too. <laughs> I can't find them. The Hydra, this is the knife that bit me a long time ago. It is definitely powerful. I still have a scar in my hand from that thing. Uh, so if you like the look of it and you really want to pay nearly 800 bucks, well, there you go. We have, oh, purple live wires now. Did you know that those were a thing? Purple live wires in Magna Cut. There you go. The Marauder H, which in my opinion is probably outside of the 187, the very best buy for a Medford knife. And these are in Magna Cut. Do we have an indication of how Mr. Medford is having these heat treated now? Because I remember, no, we do not. Well, I remember them not being um, up to the standards of the majority of the knife community. So I don't know where they're at now. But outside of that, uh, I do like the Marauder profile. I think the S45VN ones would probably be a better bet. These are all lefties, right? But it's almost certain if you check out DLT Trading, they have probably the biggest supply, supply of Medford knives on the internet. So you might look around. Uh, small Sabenza left-handed. We have Small Sabenza right-handed in a bunch of different configurations. Let's move on to the next page. This is actually different than just a couple of hours ago. So they must have recently. Holy crap. <laughs> if you're looking for a Small Sabenza, they've got them. Um, four, Seven Fords Jackal ADCR V2. Is I don't think what is ADCR V2? I'm, am I mistaken in thinking that's a low alloy kind of a basic steel? Oh, no surprise here. The McNeese PM Mach 2 three and a half inch Gen 2s are completely gone. I think those dropped this morning at 10 a.m. I made people aware of those um, here recently. Uh, I think just yesterday. Okay, the Riot PLXT. Um, yeah, you, you should buy this knife. Um, I have it here. I have the copper wash one. Riot, hey guys, make some more copper wash ones. What were you guys thinking? Like, I mean, I know Riot's not watching this, but come on. That was the coolest configuration. What'd you guys make? Seven of them? Like, don't just make them. Make more of them. That's what people wanted. If you missed out on the copper wash ones, don't worry. They're all cool. This is such a cool knife. The lock is literally right here. It's the pivot, right? So remember when CRKT did the thing with the, you push the pivot and it go, okay, cool idea. It just didn't, it didn't feel very good. It wasn't very, you know, satisfying. This is that, but super satisfying. And as far as I can tell, the locking system is at least fairly strong. It also has a secondary lock right here. And you might be thinking, what's the point of that? Well, when you choke up on the knife, if you're right-handed, your index finger lands right on top of that, that pivot, right? So if you're squeezing it hard enough, you could disengage it unless you engage that secondary lock. That's pretty cool. That's well thought out. The knife is actually super well suited for EDC. Now, we are looking at budget materials here, but it's like I always say, this is a perfect example of why you can't judge things by the materials alone, because this has unmistakably Riot's build quality. It is so much better than what you would normally find in the $50 to $75 territory, which is prime budget zone for the knife world. This is so much better. It's also right and left-handed, so you can mount that clip either way, right? We have Nitro V and G10 or Nitro V and Micarta. Uh, but honestly, this is one of the rare times I'm going to say this, even with budget materials, 
I think it's pretty well deserving of the $117 price tag. This absolutely feels like something in Kaiser's Vanguard series where they use, uh, you know, like 154 CM. The build quality is very, very good. And this is a super satisfying knife. So while it is a little bit higher than what some people might want to see, oh, look at that. Here, right here. Let me just help you make a choice here real quick. The best looking one that they've got left is either this guy here. Look at that. Holy moly, that is a sweet looking blade. Or if you don't like the black blades, which that's perfectly fine. Look at this boy right here. That's a boy ready to go to work, right? Or a girl, whatever, who, whatever. Whatever you like to, whatever you think your knives are in your head, that's fine. I don't really care. This is so cool. God, that looks cool. I love this. Such a cool knife. Pick one up. You won't regret it. Riot, I know you've got the bigger one coming with the flipper tab, and it's fine. I've got it here. It's okay. The flipper tab doesn't work super well with what's acting as the detent on this knife. Make a bigger one with the thumb studs, and you'll make everybody happy. That's, that's, that's what you guys should do. Again, I'm probably talking to nobody. Oh, my gosh. They got so many. Just pick the one you like. These are... Oh, my gosh. These are so good. They're so good. I promise you guys, you'll like them. They're great. Okay. Moving on here, Nightwatch. I wish I knew more about these brands because honestly, this is super, super nice looking. Look at this. Look at that. That's so beautiful. What this is spalting. Is that spalting? I think is what we call that. I'm not a fixed blade guy, but that looks so good. Do we have the, oh, the taper tang and we got the different colored liners there. That's a sweet looking guy. Um, let's see. What do we have? Oh, it is. Uh, oh, it's AEBL -A and made in the USA. What is AEBL? Is that similar to... Uh, 154 cm i think probably very good looking and i think probably considering these are almost certainly you know partially it's probably a mid-tech fixed blade perhaps full custom maybe i just don't know somebody who knows more about nightwatch can you know inform everybody uh the medford antic don't know anything about this is this a flipper no what is this how do you deploy it oh it's a front flipper a medford front flipper Interesting. What does it run on? The Antic is a sleek front flipper, a sleek, sleek front flipper by Medford Knife and Tool. The front flipper can be quickly flipped with blah, 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 blah. Um, Medford almost exclusively uses washers to my knowledge. So that is interesting. Oh, I forgot to see what size it was. The reason I point that out is because Washers are typically not the best suited for front flippers because of the its excess friction. It's eight and a quarter. Okay. All right. Well, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something else in there. I don't I don't know. I've just never seen that model. It's uh let, we gotta talk about this. So I was so confident. <laughs> a bunch of you guys called me out on this in the community tab. I said there were so many people complaining about the price tag of the new Conigarius and Carbon Fiber, which I agree with. That's a justified complaint. I want to make this very clear. This is too much money for this knife. The Koenig Arius is a beautiful knife. Uh, in full titanium, me personally, I think that's about a $750 knife. I'd be happy to pay $750 for a full titanium Koenig Arius. I don't think you can actually get them for that price tag, but I am not paying $1,010 for the same thing with carbon fiber. It's nice. They do a good job with it. It is not, you can't compare it with like a CJRB with a flat piece of carbon fiber on it. It's not the same thing, right? It's how they machine it. Fine. But it's not, why is this, why is this so much more money, right? Now, I overconfidently in the uh, comment section of the community tab that I made, because I posted it saying, hey, it, they're there. People are going to buy them. You guys might as well know. Because there's plenty of people out there who are like, I don't really care how much it is. I'm just going to buy it. And I make these posts so that people can pick them up. And you guys probably know, I, these are affiliate links. So I make commissions when people buy these, right? I still don't think this is the proper price tag for this. I said, those will be gone in seconds. That knife is so popular, they can probably get away for that. Uh, they can probably get away with that. And then people will flip them on the secondary market for way more money. I was wrong. I think we might have actually hit a ceiling here. And this is a good thing. And this is something that I was talking about with a few people in that community post. If we have hit a ceiling here, we've reached the limit where people are just not willing to spend this money. And this tells Koenig like, hey, uh, you can't price these things this way and expect them to go as quickly as they have been. So let's slow that down. Essentially, 
demand at this point has decreased uh, with the price tag increasing. So I'm hoping that means that we, we're never, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that believe if they complain enough that companies will reduce their prices. That will not happen. Um, now, you know, watch, watch me be wrong about it, but I've never seen that happen. All that will happen is the price will stop increasing until the demand can creep back up as inflation increases to, to happen, right? Inflation, inflation just continues on the same path that it always has. I'm not interested in a conversation about global economics and pot. I mean, if you want to type me off a paragraph, I, I won't read it. Sorry, that sounds really nose in the air. But uh, my point is here is this is good. If people are not buying it for this price tag, that means we should not see a continuous increase in pricing for at least a bit, right? Maybe we'll even see some of them stick around for a little bit so that the people who actually want them can get their hands on them. Um, again, like I said, a Koenig Arius dropping in full titanium around 750, maybe 800. That's about where I'd be on it. But this is just too much money for me. If you like this knife and you've just been waiting for a carbon fiber version, right? It's still a beautiful knife and it is definitely a great example of an ultra premium semi-custom knife made in the United States that is absolutely head and shoulders over things like Benchmade knives, Spyderco knives, ZT knives, Kershaw knives. It is not in the same caliber. It's even a tier above Hinder knives, but I don't think it belongs here. Uh, definitely not. Anyways, let's move on here. Jack Wolf Gunslinger, people have been asking me about that. We got a few... Surprise, surprise. I made a meme about this one time. The Microtech knives that are always left over are the serrated versions. And looky here, that's exactly right. Uh, if you prefer serrations, that's perfectly fine. But the demand is certainly much higher for the plain edge versions of knives, regardless of the fact that you can cut twine at a much more efficient rate with serrated edges. That's great, fantastic. I'll take a plain edge. But if you're looking for a serrated, um, you know, Microtech uh, uh, MSI or the new Matrix, which I'm actually interested in getting, except I want um, the uh, the straight edge version, um, or you want the Amphibian, they're sitting here. So, and honestly, I mean, the Matrix, eh, is that, oh, it's titanium, okay. Um, out, I think the pricing is really good on all of these. They have, have they bumped up a bit? with these these are the injection mold plastic listen if you want a reason to justify the injection mold plastic versions remember that original goat is currently making aluminum and eventually titanium aftermarket scales for these which is a great reason to pick one of these up and then swap the scales out because at that i have an aluminum msi here and i have the scales from original goat which is also linked in the description original goat scales it is a dream come true. I mean, an actual dream come true. It is such an awesome knife. So there you go. Maybe eventually we'll see the same for the amphibian. We have small Sabenza 31s uh, in the uh, Insingo blade, which is cool. Uh, Heretic Pariah, some fixed blades I don't know anything about. Case Razor, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, attention to detail. I actually like how this one looks. I'm just not sure if they have... The two that I handled had up and down blade play. Maybe they've corrected that. I'm not sure. Maybe I should look again. Lefty Medford Praetorian Tees. Oh, wow. The Rockstead. You know, um, I, I, I do still think these are overpriced, but they haven't really increased the price tags of these much. This is the silver to bronze. I think this is cool. I don't know why Rockstead just doesn't make one of these. It's just all silver underneath. I mean, I, I would probably pick that up, even though I already own one in blue. Um, I think that's, I think it's cool. Uh, more antics. We have the Godfather in gray. Those have definitely gone up in price. We have the Protec Rock Eye textured. I don't know why they still do. They call it D2. It is CPM D2. See? And yes, that's different. It is different. It's, it's not the same thing as, as ingot form D2. But, uh, the better versions of these, this is one of the best automatic knives that Protec makes. The better versions of these are the ones that come in S35VN, or did they make some in S45? I can't remember. Um, so I would hold out for one of those, honestly. Uh, let's go on here. I, I want to save some time to go to E-Knives, because they also have some interesting stuff. Defiant 7 Servo in titanium. I've heard of Defiant 7. I just don't know anything about this knife. It looks very... Um, 
it looks very less George to me. Who designed this? Okay. <laughs> am I am I alone? I mean here, right here especially. That's it really looks like a VECP. But I mean obviously the profile's a little different. Okay, it's fine, you know. That's it looks it's 204P. That's interesting. We don't see 204P often. If you don't know what 204P is, that's Carpenter's version of M390 or 20 C V. And is exactly as good. Uh, uh the vehement mongrels are still here. I think these have taken no, you know what? You can still get these for five hundred. So that's kind of cool. Uh, some of them anyway. Lefty, Slim Middies, Phobos Tier 1. I don't know anything about these. They look cool. Still, for some reason, tempted by a hatchet. I have no use for a hatchet, but I mean, I don't have, technically, I don't have the proper use for the 250 other bladed objects I have down here. SOCOM Bravo Mini, unsurprising. It's left over in serrations. Uh, people who love serrations, man, you guys just like have everything at your fingertips <laughs> like anything that comes serrated there's like always one left over somewhere you can pretty much always get it lefty praetorian tees uh there must not be a left hand a bunch of left-handed people who are looking for medford small sabenza unique graphics are very plentiful always have been on dlt trading let's go on here another page i'm just looking for one more semi-unique thing we still have xoms with the more interesting uh, red and black Damascus G10. The Luft Concepts RWB and S90V I've heard is a good knife. Uh, Spyderco wire clips in various Timascus, you know, fancy stuff like that. If you have, it's probably more for people who um, like have a custom build already and are just looking for something a little bit more exotic to match their, their crazy build. Like for example, I have that... Um, uh, that Zerkatai Spyderco Shaman and S90V that still has a basic MHG, MXG clip on it. And if I found a Timascus clip somewhere, I would probably add it to it. Um, anyways, moving on. Kershaw Scour, Kershaw Wharf, Kershaw Sanctum, Launch 19. It's a good knife. It just kind of has an aesthetic I don't think is super appealing. Oh, they have a carbon fiber live wire here. That's cool. Check that one out for sure. Small Sabenzas, a plenty. Still more of the same. We'll go one more page and then we'll switch over to e-knives real quick here. Lots of Victorinox kitchen knives, which I'll admit I've been tempted by a few times as well. The Medford 187 DPT is easily the best priced Medford that they make. The S90V ones in particular offered by DLT Trading are the ones I would recommend if you're searching for a, um, you know, a Medford um the 247 this is a knife we have not talked about for a long time but wow absolutely gorgeous here's a knife i think is a little more deserving of a 945 dollar price tag have they improved the action on these knives i don't know but if the action is anything like uh the whippersnapper the v2 whippersnapper i would say yes these knives are made in the usa we have Damasteel, we have Titanium, and a beautiful, is this C-Tech? Hold on. Does it, it doesn't say. <laughs> Blade Styles Purist. Boy, it looks like C-Tech, it's cool, man. And this is a polished, you can see the reflectivity. That's a polished frame right there. Very cool. Looks like it might have some type of interesting texture on it. Um, that, that's more, you know, like that versus the Arius. I just think there's more going on there, right? Look at that one. That one's got the spidey hole in there. Super cool. I should return to that knife and check it out. Whippersnappers, if these are the V2s, I think these are the sub frame lock versions. Yeah. These are the ones that have the really, really nice action. So, Alamic Cutlery, always cool. Definitely something that's a, a company that's overlooked. No surprise at all that the PMP Alpha Beast Gen 2 is still available. Um, the price tag is what's doing those things in. The original ones, the V1s, were made by Riot and they were in D2 and they were overpriced at 500, but people still bought them. The new ones are in Magna Cut, which at this geometry, who cares? It's nearly a half an inch thick, but it's made in Italy, which is why they're so much more expensive. 
it's still overpriced though, for sure. All right, carabiners and American service versions of the Victorinox Classic. Oh no, no, these are the American. These are actually USA. They just look like the Victorinox Classic. Okay, let's hop over to e knives here real quick. Actually, before we do that, I want to see if there's inter anything interesting under the restocks tab. This is something that I I'm always telling people to check. I find gems here all the time. Combat Troodon, restocked probably very recently. Gen 3 Combat Troodon sitting right there. Mini Hera, haven't actually checked that one out yet. Lion Steel, I haven't heard of those. It's kind of an interesting knife though, the Lion Steel Skinny. Another Combat Troodon Gen 3 Double Edge just restocked right there. That William Henry Button Lock thing. Or wait, no, that's just a thumb stud opener. There's a Protec Malibu Warncliffe Blackout sitting right there for 240 bucks. The Military 2 in S110V. Oh, there's a um, Microtech uh, Stitch in Fluted G10 sitting there. Just just sitting there. <laughs> this, is, this is why I tell people to check because, I mean, like, this is the stuff that goes, right? The Sog Seal XR USA Made is actually a super cool knife. It will bite your hand in terms of like the amount of jimping that's on there, but definitely cool. Uh, anything else? Not really. Nothing that's really jumping out at me. Um, but definitely some more interest. There's another one. Oh, that's the auto. There's an auto stitch sitting right there. I think those have become easier to get. Auto SOCOM Elite. There's a manual. This is the exact one that I own. This is the one. That was so hard to get. Mine is from 2018. This is these are the ones that everybody, these are the USA ones. The one that was so hard to get. And now they're available again. And honestly, they're 40 bucks more than when my wife bought me mine in 2018. Not M390 MK. It's just M390. I don't know how they're heating treating that. But these are all great examples as to why you should be checking the restocks page at uh, sites like DLT and E Knives. So moving over to e-knives, we have, is that a live wire Tanto? That's cool. Benchmade Shootout, eh, I'd go with the live wire. More Cleric 2s, those are, those are huge if, you don't, if you're not familiar. No surprise here that we have um, <laughs> more serrated uh, MSIs. We have Combat Troodons. Oh, we got two-tone Combat Troodons here. We got the single-edge Combat Troodon. I don't know what the Steamboat is. Ultratech is. We have more of the, oh, a whole bunch of Spartan Harzies. These are the full size ones. I love this knife. Absolutely love it. Look at this. Oh, that is a looker. Is that Chad Nichols? I bet that's Chad Nichols Damascus. Hold on. Are they, yep. Yes, it is. Chad Nichols Damascus. That's really nice stuff. That's really nice. If you're not going to have a polish on Damascus, that's the kind of stuff that I want. That looks very good. I like that a lot. The one that I have is all black. Uh, cool, though. Look at that. Is that the koi fish? I'm not a big fan of the whole koi fish aesthetic, but I know that that's like a big deal to some people is the koi fish aesthetic. So if you're into that, they have a really nice... For me, it's just the color combination. The gray, black, and bronze I think is really cool. So American made, you know, not bad, not bad pricing, all things considered. Uh, let's see here. Another comp, that's a serrated single edge. And of course they have a, uh, a, a large supply of the PLXT as well. So if you go to DLT and your favorite thing is sold out, then come here and check and see if, if they have your favorite thing. Um, this is very interesting to me. Now, this is a very expensive knife, but I am wildly attracted to the pivot area here. And look how we've done the inlay. Look how the pivot is capped. I mean, this is such a cool looking knife. Um, the problem for me is that it's only seven and a quarter inches. It is undoubtedly beautiful. I just want it to be bigger. And I'm, oh, that's a pre-owned knife too. <laughs> I have no idea where you normally would get those. I've never, I mean, I've heard of Shark Knife Co., but I just don't know anything about the company. All right, moving on here. Balasongs, Hera 2, no idea if they've corrected the bounce back issues. The Guardian Tactical Scout is very interesting. Let's look at this one here. 
I think this is, it's very similar to the Recon 35, um, but just like with more detail. 270 bucks, pretty competitive, eight inches, 3.375 inch LMAX blade, uh, triple ball bearing, glass break, I don't know, what okay. But really cool looking. We still have the Halloween font, but okay. Honestly, a nice looking OTF. I've always enjoyed Guardian Tactical. They're the smoothest operating OTFs on the market outside of Hawk. So there you go. Bunch of choices there. Bunch of choices. Oh, that's the GTX. I'm sorry. The GTX is smaller. Make sure that you look. That one's 2.5 inches. So if you're looking for the smaller one, it's the GTX. And they have a whole bunch of GTXs. Boy, it's been a while since I've looked all the way through e-knives. Hmm. Next page here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. They got the Shirograph Quantum Ursus. That is the best starter shiro because of the price tag this is how this is the best way to get into shiro Garoth, is with the quantum ursus i want to say this is chromax yes same profile as the quantum but the quantum 2 is twelve hundred dollars so it's it's like 45 percent off <laughs> and 80 percent the experience if you're trying to get into Shiro Garof, but you're intimidated by the 1,000 plus models, the Quantum Ursus is the way to go. Beautiful knife. Glycon, still one of the best looking OTFs out there. Let's move on here. e -Knives has great stuff, man. Uh, the 3.25 inch version of the Harzi folder, more MSIs, tons of UTX 85s and Ultratex. Those are everywhere now. Uh, but the nice thing is you can get what you want. I wish they'd make more direct deltas. Oh, that's a beautiful M. Look at that. Not usually a big fan of two tone, but that is a super sick looking amphibian. Wow, very cool. I love how they did that. That's really nice. Uh, some Medfords I don't really care about. Mm, another amphibian, another Hera two. It says 2024. Oh, yeah, it's because they released the Hera. I guess they released it in 2024. That's a really big OTF, by the way. The Is this an attention to detail bar lock? Yeah. So I would be interested in checking out their bar lock just to see if it locks up more solid than their frame lock versions. There's a plain Quantum Ursus for 700 in black G10. Oh, and I'm sorry, Blackwood inlay. So another option there. Uh, that Kershaw Scour is kind of interesting, not going to lie. Kershaw Layup with the Duralock, that's also very interesting. At, oh, that's really cool. Hmm. Yeah, I like that one. What do we got here? D2. Okay, not bad. I mean, for 50 bucks. What do we got going on here? Is this all covered in? No. Why is it blue right there? Hmm. Okay. Well, I do like the layup. I don't know anything about it. Maybe Kershaw will send me one. The S30V Blur has finally jumped over 100 bucks. I don't know when that happened, but that was inevitable. That's cool. <laughs> That's nasty. Oh, man. Oh, God. That is so cool. I am really tempted by that. Look at that milling. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. That looks pretty cool. 950 bones. Those are... Well, it doesn't say. I mean, I've always assumed attention to details USA. I'm almost certain that, that it is. What do we got going on here with the inside of the liners? Are they, like, heated? Oh, I bet that's the... Is that the steel housing for the axis or the crossbar lock? That's the, that's the coolest one that I've seen. Almost a nightmare. Uh, like I... A uh, Strider style nightmare grind. Here's the plain Quantum Ursus. Just plain Jane. If you don't want an inlay, that one's there. Um, <laughs> the Hawk Automatic Crambit. I haven't seen one of those for a while. Anything else? Kershaw Iridium uh, in KVT bearings. Uh, that might be interesting to some people. Kershaw Livewire in all black. Livewire in carbon fiber. And it's a different carbon fiber version. Do we have the S35VN here? Nope, that one's still D2. 
it's fine. If you don't care about D2, I would hold out for the S35BN ones. Or you can pick up one in bronze and Damascus if you'd like. Hey, here's some plain edge matrixes in titanium and in carbon fiber. So there you go. And do we have anything in the restocks page? Let's look real quick. Oh boy, there it is. I was going to say, it's usually on the front page. This is a genius thing for them to have added because it really works out uh, sometimes for people hunting little treasures. Another SOCOM Elite manual. Haven't seen the Akuchi for a long time. I'll go to page two. Usually e-knives restocks are worth looking at for the first couple of pages. They keep their restocks pretty updated. Is that a direct Delta Shadow? Yeah, there's a good example of a treasure find. Um, I mean, stuff you don't normally see from Microtech would be a, this is the bigger one. I own the Direct Delta. That's my favorite. This is the knife that makes the Benchmade Infidel look silly. Uh, head and shoulders above the, the Benchmade Infidel. Same size, easier to carry, better firing power, better steel, better look overall. Just a cool knife. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Like I said, all these pages will be linked in the description for you guys to go through and check out everything for yourselves. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.